On the morning of May 14, 1988, Amori Riviera, a young man from Puerto Rico, photographed a giant disk, followed and circled by two jet interceptors. What makes the sensational pictures even more interesting is Riviera's claim that he had contact with the occupants of this UFO. Hello, my name is uh, Amaudi Rivera. Este, I live in Puerto Rico. And back in 1988, uh, I was working in a nightclub. And uh, there was a, a musical group there. One of my cousins wanted me to photograph the musical group. And she loaned me a camera with some film. On my way back home, uh, I encountered uh, two small uh, beings, two small strange men, which I didn't think were... Uh, men from outer space and uh, they took me somewhere where there were other people uh, besides myself uh, uh, other human people like from Puerto Rico I guess uh, from here another human being showed up he claimed to be from a distant planet he was dressed in black he had a dark skin but he was he was not a Negro he had a, a black long black hair up to the shoulders and he spoke to us uh, with the mouth, uh, verbally, and not, no telepathic speaking. Uh, he showed us uh, various uh, uh, projections, uh, which looked uh, very real, the projections, and he informed us about a whole bunch of things that are even still incredible to me. Uh, then uh, he, they returned me to... What did this holographic projection show? Uh, the holographs uh, were mainly, uh, the first one that I can remember was a, uh, like a short trip uh, through space. Uh, we saw where he, he came from, where he said to be from. We saw his people, we saw his, his, the houses that they used. And, and the second one was about uh, a meteor or a rock uh, falling to earth in the near future which is going to cause a lot of um, havoc in, in the world. This would fall, in, it's going to fall in, in very near the, the Caribbean, Puerto Rico, and those um, other small islands. But it's going to affect the whole world, not just uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, the last one is, is, uh, that they projected it was uh, showing us how there was only going to be one government on, on the planet Earth. Uh, they'll be living on some sort of artificial island uh, that's going to be floating in the middle of a dark, black, uh, dirty sea. Uh, and then uh, this man uh, returned me uh, to uh, my, my car again and left me somewhere different from where uh, the whole uh, ordeal had started. Apparently, they uh, it took me with car and all. Uh, after this, at this given time, I l heard some jets in the sky, and I still had my cousin's camera, and I took uh, the pictures, uh, four of which are ma I'm making public nowadays. So the jets followed the UFO? Yes, it was. Uh, they seemed to be uh, uh, surveilling it. Uh, I only got to uh, capture just one of the, the, the jets in the photograph, but there were actually there were three of them. Uh, or, or maybe I got in one of the photos one, and in the second or third I got one of the other ones, because they would go around it very far away, and while this one was closer, and turn, you know, very far, very far. And by the time this one was coming back, another one was turning over there. There was always one or the other close to the, to the object, to the UFO. Jürgen Martin has carefully investigated this case. Jürgen Rivera's case is, to me, is a very special one and a very important one because uh, in Amaury's case, he was abducted and he was taken away by aliens. One of them was human-like and two small creatures that they explained to him were some type of uh, genetical or biological organic android that they made to do some chores outside so they don't have to uh, risk themselves in our environment. That's what they explained to him, the so-called human alien that he saw in the craft. And it's important also because of the evidences that he has on the case, because when he was released, he had a camera with him, and he was able to take pictures of the object that apparently had abducted him, the craft, flying saucer type, and also some jet fighters from the United States 
<coughs> excuse me, F-14 again. In most of these cases, in the island, F-14s are involved with these situations of chasing and harassment and, and checking on these objects when they are seen in the different areas of the island. And they, he was able to get them in those pictures together. So this clearly, when you see those photographs, it's obvious that the government has been lying for many years because there's the UFO there, and there's also the jet fighters dealing with the situation, which they denied for more than 40 years. It's there. Were you able to locate any other witnesses? That's what I was going to, to explain at this moment, Michael. Uh, the Amoris case is also very important because I have other several people who apparently had been contacted by the same alien that abducted Amori and the small ones that were with him in a, di in a separate uh, fashion. They have nothing to do with Amori's incident. This being, this human-like alien, is contacting people all around the area of the southwest of Puerto Rico. I have people from the town of Yauco who seem to have been contacted by this man. I have this fisherman, Andres Maldonado, uh, who I got in contact with Amori because he told me several things Amori had told no one before, only I knew them, about the name of the alien and all the details that he was using to check on the people who really may have been in contact this, uh, with the same being the night he was abducted because there were about 14 other people there in the craft that night. And when Mandolano told me all this information that he couldn't know because it was, he was not involved with Amori's case, uh, I got them together. And at this moment, I have about three different people who seem to have been in contact with the same alien. So they are doing something, and they are getting in contact with more and more people and preparing people for something. And this is very important because all this corroborates Amari's incident also.